today I have something super exciting for you. I was able to chat with some of the creative minds behind us again. The adorable Disney short. It's the first theatrical short for Disney in five years, and it was released alongside Raya and the Last Dragon. It is now going to be available on Disney Plus June 4th, and I was able to spend the day chatting with some of the people behind this short. Now, in this interview, there's going to be two that post, but in this one, I talk with Brad Simonson, who is the producer, as well as Pinar Toprak, who is the composer. Fun fact, she also is a composer for Captain Marvel, so you know I had to geek out just a little bit and talk to her about that. So I hope you enjoy this interview. If this is your first time here, I'd love it if you take one second, hit that subscribe button, and uh, if you enjoy the content, go ahead and hit that notification bell. All right, guys, enjoy the interview. Hey, Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk with me today. I adore this short. My family loves this short. We've watched it many a times already, and it's it's definitely one of our favorites. Um, now, this is the first Disney short in five years, which is crazy. Can you each, and we can start with Brad, uh, talk about what it means to be a part of this after, you know, such a little gap in them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the first theatrical Disney short in five years. Yeah. yeah. It, um, it means the world. I mean, I think there's, it's just such a privilege and an honor to be given, you know, an opportunity like this. Uh, when Zach and I originally were chatting about it, you know, you pinch yourself. You're just like, wow, they're going to let us make a movie. Like, this is cool. <laughs> so it's like, um, and you, and you take it, you know, you know that the bar, the Disney animation bar that's set and, um, and you want to be able to honor that legacy, um, but do it in a healthy way that isn't stressful. So it's like, that's really, as it started to come, you know, as it, as it became real and they said, yes, you're really doing that. Those are all the kind of emotions that come through. It's like, wow, I get to do this. And, oh, I have to do that. <laughs> <I get to, laughs> it's pretty awesome. So there you go. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, add everything <laughs> to what I was saying. I mean, the, the, the whole process was absolutely incredible. I, I worked on uh, a Pixar short before. Uh, so this was my, uh, my second animated short that I was part of. And um, the, the first one was a bit more traditional in a sense that it was already done and I scored the film after it was done. With this one, I was involved from the very beginning. So uh, it's just a complete honor and privilege to have been involved from, from the start. Yeah, so speaking of that, I mean, there's no dialogue in this. It is all music. So did you feel any kind of pressure when creating this one? Sure, I mean, it's not, everything can be looked at as pressure or challenge, you know? The, for me, the way I look at it is always, I mean, how cool is that, that music is gonna have that, that front stage, you know, along with, with dance. You know that that doesn't happen uh, very often. So for me, I I, I saw it as, as a privilege that uh, that every note was going to matter. You know, um, and every note always matters, and everything that I write, I'm very I try to be very careful about the, the choices I make. But with this one, it's so apparent because every single note, even in the the part where it sounds like it's improvised, you have these like trumpet solo that plays everything. Mm -hmm written exactly that it was going to be played because it was all animated to that so um the choices really really mattered so that was that was it's not necessarily pressure it's just really making sure that it's right you know yeah now where did you draw inspiration from um creating well for you Pinar for creating the music well for me I mean it was all it all came from Zach honestly uh he had this incredible uh, vision for what the film was going to be like and I was just trying to catch up <laughs> you know? uh, and, and and understand it so that it's uh, I, I do it justice basically um, and uh, he had this idea of funk and soul uh, which I was as soon as I heard it, I'm like yes <laughs> it's just I just don't get to write that that often and I listen to funk and soul a lot um, so that was really, really great. And in terms of stylistic approach beyond that, it was, it was really, you know, we talked a bit about, you know, Fantasia and Rhapsody in Blue, you know, 
how can you make it so the dialogue, you know, and everything happens through through music and dance, and they were co-inspiring each other. Music was inspiring their choreography, and then seeing what they do with the choreography would then, you know, further uh, inspire me to 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 mold it and shape it. So um, it was just a really really awesome way of working. Yeah. And then Brad, for you, there's so much involved in this. So like, <laughs> I mean, if you just look at the short, there's like the cities and so much. So where was inspiration drawn for stuff like that? Like the cityscapes and all the people in the backgrounds? Uh, Zach's brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, well, it's what's wonderful about working with a filmmaker like Zach um, you know, we met on Big Hero 6 and he was the head of animation and I was the associate producer. Um, and I recognized in him something that's rare, which is both attention to detail, understanding of story and emotional arcs, right? But mm -hmm. also he, he has this way of, of using resources in a way, and that's kind of a vague term, but what we did is we challenged our heads of departments, our crew, to say, hey, and that's why there's so many little Easter eggs in this thing, is we said, hey, if we don't have to build it, you know, Zach's going to, we're going to storyboard it and we're going to see these environments um, like, like the park or like buildings. Uh, let's figure a way to just, um, you know, take those from other movies and use them. So we, we found ways to be efficient that allowed us that giant scope that you're seeing. I mean, cause for a short film, you're right. We originally, we originally were told were we originally looked at like, okay, a couple environments and we have, I think we have 33 environments in this movie. Wow. Really? <laughs> it's a lot, you know, for a little short film. So it's, man, it just packs a punch. And as a team, uh, the team really stepped up to that level and found ways to, to bring that wealth in onto screen. Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, so did you guys have to deal with the pandemic at all? Or did that create any challenges for you guys? Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful question. Uh, so we finished the movie from a, from a, a delivery perspective. We, had, we were literally in our last week of animation. And so we kind of do the process we do down the pipeline, right? So we were in our last week of animation when Los Angeles went into lockdown and then we jumped uh, virtual and it took us about two weeks. So while, while we were transitioning, we did things like color keys and things like that, that didn't, that didn't have the high demand and bandwidth that we ultimately were using later because it allowed us some infrastructure build time. And then we got into full blown simulation effects, lighting. And then ultimately we did, Pinar was the first, uh, uh, kind of COVID, stage work that we did. Uh, so Pinar, tell us about like what that felt like because we lived that together. Yes, um, so we have a big band and a pretty decent sized string orchestra, 40 piece string and a big band. Um, and during COVID times, and this is, we recorded this October, 2020. Um, mm -hmm. So, and this was the, the very first session uh, that we had to figure out how, you know, we put everybody in the same room. How were we going to do all of that? So uh, that took a bit of uh, coordination to say the least. <laughs> but we did it. I mean, it was kind of incredible. And it was actually very emotional because a lot of these musicians, you know, after we went into lockdown in March, from March to that time, they had not even seen each other. They had not actually. Wow. These are musicians that normally play almost daily together. So, you know, we we're like a family. And uh, it was actually really emotional. And then we had this beautiful <laughs> story and beautiful music on top of it so you know it was just like they, they got together and it was, it was really well that it just brings tears to my eyes it was a really beautiful oh yeah beautiful. oh go yeah. ahead no i was just gonna say it was beautiful to watch you know pinar is in her element in that moment and up until then we'd only worked with her like you know in one-on-one -on -one with her working from her own home studio but then seeing her work with that team and running that team 
honestly was emotional for me. Like I was like, man, she's a pro. This is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. I know I'm looking forward to seeing people in person again. Like that's, I can't wait. So I'm sure it was a very emotional room. Well, thank you guys for taking the time today. I know you got more people to talk to, but real quick, I have to geek out Pinar. Like uh, Captain Marvel is my all time favorite. So like beautiful job on that. Absolutely amazing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you for making time for us today. Of course, of course. Love the short. Seriously, it's so good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that interview. Let me know your favorite part from it down below in the comments. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. And again, Us Again is coming to Disney Plus tomorrow, June 4th. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much to all of my monetary supporters, my members here on YouTube, as well as my patrons. If you haven't joined yet, please consider doing so. We have some really awesome perks, including a monthly Zoom meeting where we get to talk face to face. Thank you again to everyone who supports me.